Okay, my friends, once more, we're talking about dipole electron flood theory in relationship to the Earth's magnetic field. And there are some things to consider right now. Listen to this now. Do you know where the North Pole is? You're probably thinking here. Well, there are actually two. Earth's geographic North Pole is fixed, but the planet's magnetic North Pole, the north that your compass points to, is not. It moves over time due to magnetic changes in the Earth's core. It was first measured in the Canadian Arctic in 1831. Since then, it's moved about 2,300 kilometers toward Russian Siberia. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the British Geographical Survey tend to update the location of the magnetic North Pole every five years. But this update came early because the pole is traveling faster, more than 55 kilometers per year. All right, that's, that's significant. Originally, it was like 15 kilometers a year when they started measuring it. And that wasn't, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And now all of a sudden it's speeding up much faster. And I think I have an explanation for this. Okay, my friends, you know, dipole electron flood theory. I have to be able to explain every single interaction of energy. Because energy are the dipoles. Now, there's a resonance frequency. It's called a Schumann resonance frequency. And it's the Earth heartbeat. And it's approximately 7.83 hertz. That means 7.83 times a second. This frequency pulsates. Now, the frequency is a naturally occurring electromagnetic frequency, electromagnetic dipole. It's a frequency bouncing dun, 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 back and forth in the Earth's ionosphere. That's way out in the ionosphere often referred to the Earth's heartbeat. It's a fundamental resonant frequency of the Earth ionosphere ca cavity. But I say no, it's the capacity. It's the capacity of that layer to absorb electrons and then it has to discharge. That's what the heartbeat is. It's, a, it's here. Well, let me just show you. All the resonance frequency is discharge. Heartbeat of Earth's atmosphere detected from space. Lightning flashes in the skies above the Earth about 50 times a second, creating a burst of electromagnetic waves that circle around the planet's atmosphere. Now, they, what it really is, is it absorbs so much it can't hold anymore and has to discharge. That's the lightning discharge. That's because we're spinning our atmosphere into the atmosphere of space. And it's fairly consistent particles out there. And we're scrubbing through them. However, when the sun gets really intense, it shoots a whole batch more electrons down and it changes the Schumann frequency, you know, a little bit, not a ton, but enough. If it, more electrons come in there than normal, it's going to discharge quicker. Okay, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. If you look at the visible spectrum, all right, these are the different colors. Red is a slow light, and light doesn't, doesn't flap like a wave. Light spins, and it spins this way. All right, there's a little a little ball of light, basically. It's a, it's a uh, photon. And there's two, the black and the white, the black and the white. And it spins. And as it goes through space, it hits other things. And when it hits other, it, it actually slows down and stretches. You'd think it would push together. It doesn't. That's a fast light. As it hits, it goes boom. Boom, boom. Because as it hits, it doesn't just hit it and slow down. It boom, 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 boom. And it goes longer like that. So you end up with a longer, slower wave as light slows down. And light will slow down. They say, oh, light doesn't slow down. That's not true at all. That's just totally wrong. It slows down, and they have seen it slow down now. I don't think there's any debate about that anymore. Just recently, they said, yes, it does slow down. They saw fast radio bursts. 
And they said, there's no question, the light is slowing down as it's coming to us. It's not the same speed as it started. Okay, if you've been watching and following me at all, you know my claim is the universe is biological. As far as I can tell, 100%. And I'm not talking about just this and that. I'm talking 100%, which means the sun is biological as well as all the planets and us and bugs and everything. So how can I show that? How can I prove that? I can't necessarily prove it, but how can I support that statement? Well, the sun is a sphere of hot ionized gas called plasma. It emits matter in various forms. That's just not true. It's not, ma it's not plasma. This outside surface is plasma, which is glowing because of its scrubbing through the atmosphere of space, yes. But it's not a, the whole thing isn't a gas ball. What does it give off in the solar wind? As it goes forward, all that particles come back at us in the solar wind. And what are they? It's a continuous stream of charged particles flowing outward from the sun's corona, which is millions of degrees. The corona is millions way out on the outside edge, and it's only 10,000 on the surface. It consists primarily of protons, which are hydrogen nuclei, and electrons. Well, that's about all there is. You, it, they make into matter, and they turn into matter. It's the smaller amounts of helium ions, which are alpha particles, and traces of heavier ions, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, silicon, iron, and magnesium. All essential particles for life. These are, these are, these are the atoms that build living things. The sun, as far as I'm concerned, at one time was a, a living creature, or still is, in, in this particular structure that allows itself to be scrubbed through space and give off all these particles of light. Primarily it's light that it's given off, but it's also given off these, these particles that are actually particles that made up the body of that creature. That's all I can say right now. As far as I'm concerned, nothing exists that was not originally alive or is alive now. All the meteorites, all the asteroids, all the planets, all the moons, every single thing, meteorites, I have them here in my shop. There's no question about it. They were bi bi parts of biology. I think we live in a universe that is nothing but biological. Okay, my friends, this relates to a dipole electron flood theory, and I think it could be, you know, semi-serious. Do you know where the North Pole is? You're probably thinking here. Well, there are actually two. Earth's geographic North Pole is fixed, but the planet's magnetic North Pole, the north that your compass points to, is not. It moves over time due to magnetic changes in the Earth's core. It was first measured in the Canadian Arctic in 1831. Since then, it's moved about 2,300 kilometers toward Russian Siberia. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the British Geographical Survey tend to update the location of the magnetic North Pole every five years. But this update came early because the pole is traveling faster, more than 55 kilometers per year. Compare that to the year 2000, when its speed was 15 kilometers. If the pole isn't accurately located, the consequences could be disastrous. They're worried about how communications locate cell phones and, and airplane runways and everything. I mean, it affects everything. So they have to adjust the software to take into account this drifting pole. So that they can, they know usually this, the car was going to be here if it, we had these readings, but because we're drifting, the car is really over here, so they have to adjust for it, that type of thing.
I hope that made sense. But the, it's, a, it's a serious problem. And not only is it serious there, they can adjust for that. They're not having any trouble, I don't think, doing that. However, it's being pushed, and it's being pushed faster and faster. That means there's going to be a, 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 a threshold. And at that point, pew, you fall off the threshold and the field flips, more than likely. All right, before we get started, I just want to comment on this particular channel. It's called World is One News. W-I-O-N. All right, now, here it is right here. W-I-O-N. 10 million subscribers. But I only have 15,000 hits since January on this, and I thought this was fabulous. And it's only two and a half minutes long. I'm going to show you what they're talking about, which is the drifting magnetic field. The planet's still spinning the way it normally did, but the magnetic field is moving fast. 55 kilometers a year is being pushed towards Siberia, and nobody seems to have a good handle on this. I think I might have something to contribute. Now, they, they have some statements they made down here which are very, very encouraging. It says, WION, the World is One News, examines global issues with in-depth analysis. That's what I want. Somebody that's in interested, does some in-depth analysis. Provide much more than the news of the day. Our aim is to empower people to explore their world. That's where I am not empowered. And I can see they're getting hit too. They only have 15,000 hits on this. They have 10 million subscribers. I have 228,000 subscribers somewhere right in that area. And I get a couple thousand hits, same thing. It's like, you know, you're not really being allowed to speak and be heard. The algorithm says this is not what people want to hear. Put them on a back shelf. So you, you don't get hurt, and that's my interpretation. I could be wrong, but they want to empower people. Well, I'd love to be empowered. I'd love to discuss it with them, and I'm going to try to contact them, and if I can't contact them, I would love it if they would contact me, roger at mudfossils.com, which is another part of my research that's not really well received let's put it that way because it changes everything about our history and what we were told hills and valleys and streams and rivers are all of that stuff has to be looked at again with you know focus and analysis deeper understanding other than all this and it appears that that is the nature of humanity is to slough something off when it's not easily understood first of all and secondly when it's you know it's, it's serious i mean this stuff that i'm talking about when i do my research this is serious stuff this is not just fun and games and oh look there's a new sponge growing no this is like what's our history what's our eternity maybe going to be nobody has answers for these things so it's fair game to talk about them and that's what we're going to do you know, now that I know basically what the Earth is made of is, is creatures' bodies, there's nothing I can find that wasn't alive at one time. It's, it's crazy, but that is true. The second thing is the energy that's given off by the sun. We're scrubbing through all these particles in space that have never been even thought of before. The, the things that leave the sun and come at us are rays of light, but they are particles. There's not just nothing there. And they are pushing the magnetic field away. And at some point in my model, there will be some uh, wrenching. I would think of the internal part of the earth, which right now they don't understand. They know there's a molten lead, uh, iron core in there. No, I, I don't think so. Listen to what this has to say. Her tectonic plates and geomagnetic fields is something more sensitive than we imagined. A spiritual mirror. 
a planetary soul. That's inside and when you. humanity lives in harmony with the Creator, with one another, with the rhythms of the natural world, the earth is still. She rests, she sings. But when we turn from love, when we poison the rivers and divide our hearts, when we forget the sacredness of life, the earth shudders, she grieves, and eventually she shifts not to punish, but to reflect, not to destroy, but to cleanse. This is not... Well, cleanse it would if it was enough of a wrenching of the earth. You know, that, there would be a lot of consequences. Not mythology, not metaphor. This is vibration, as above, so below, as within, so without. And if August brings an awakening in the volcanoes, a weakening in the shield, a shaking in the poles, then perhaps it is not the earth we should fear, but the distance between ourselves and the divine Edgar Cayce never described the earth's shaking as wrath. He never claimed that mountains cracked open because of divine punishment or that oceans rose in rage. He did predict all those things. And um, this is Edgar Cayce. And he went into trances and said he could see things. Listen to what it has to say here and saw the bones of the earth shift. A man who spoke not from theory, but from a deep well of spirit, as if his soul could read the vibration of creation itself. That man was Edgar Casey, known as the sleeping prophet. Casey left behind over 14,000 documented psychic readings. Among them were cryptic yet powerful warnings. Visions of volcanoes rising, coastlines collapsing, and the poles rebalancing. Not metaphorically, but physically. North and south would shift. The very axis of Earth would respond to the condition of humanity's soul. He said this rebalancing would not come suddenly, but in signs, stages, and storms. And Casey gave us one clue to mark the beginning. When volcanoes awaken, he said, and the crust weakens. Well, that's happening right now. Now, why would he say that when volcanoes awaken and the crust weakens? That means that the structure of the earth is, is becoming floppy. Basically, that's what, to me. That's when you'll know. The poles are preparing to move. Now, what if that time is August 2025? Let us begin, not with fear, but with reverence, with the earth and her quiet aching voice, because something is happening beneath our feet and above our heads, something ancient, something alive. Volcanoes long asleep are stirring. Mount Etna's breath glows red against Sicilian skies. Campi Flegre, the fiery fields of Italy swell with pressure. Mexico's Papacatapetl groans, coughing ash into the heavens, and deep in the heart of America. Yellowstone simmers in silence, like a dragon curled beneath the land. Yes, I, I can go along with that. The, um, the things that we're witnessing right now are the things that he's speaking of at this very moment. I mean, it's kind of scary. <laughs> 